Um. Common Man and Company. Big Wednesday program. Name that name. It's Game Show Wednesday. That will be coming up in the 5 o'clock hour. A special NFL Draft edition. We get ready for the NFL Draft with our guy. Former head coach, current ESPN NFL analyst, Herm Edwards. Coach, always good to talk to you. Well, it's, it, it's a fun time of the year right now. If you're a fan of any football team, the National Football League, you, you're very optimistic. Uh, you're going to get some new players. Uh, and I know a lot of people in analysts are saying, well, this is not a good draft. I tell you what, I think it's a really good draft in the sense that you're going to pick up a lot of good football players between round two and three to help you win football games. Talk about it from the perspective of, of the people getting ready to pick these guys, the coaches and the general managers and what they're doing now. Have they pretty much already made their mind up who they want at this point now? It's just waiting to see where the chips fall? Well, obviously your board is lined up. And now from now the, the discussions start, do we move up the board, do we move down the board? Uh, you're visiting with a lot of football teams as far as um, – you know, can we make some deals? And, and that's what people are doing right now. But your board is set. Uh, if you're stuck at where you have to pick, there's probably three or four players up there that you're going to continue to discuss. And you're going to make sure all the everything is, is, is straight with the guy. Nothing comes, you know, uh, in late on a player. Uh, and then from there, you're just waiting until it's your turn. What do you think about a team like the Browns, who right now don't have a second-round pick, if they, if their number one guy, let's say it's D. Milner at number six or whoever they rate there, if he's gone, do you think that just triggers them to trade down and then try to get some second round picks since they don't have any and this draft is full of some good talent there? Well, I think it makes a great, uh, you know, a great observation there in this sense. Um, if I'm Cleveland, you know, and I know they like D. Milner, uh, but now some things have come up. You know, is, is he going to be healthy and all this kind of stuff? I think he's going to be healthy. I think he's a good football player. But you got to look at the other corners, too. There's some other corners there, True Font, obviously, uh, Xavier Rhodes is sitting there. you got to ask yourself this question. Are we willing to maybe move down a couple picks uh, and still be able to get a corner and now pick up a second-round pick? So that's the conversation they're having. I mean, you got to have that conversation in all likelihood. I mean, D. Miller's a fine player, but these other corners are pretty good, too. And I'm not saying they're the quality of him, but they're going to be starters also, so you got to ask yourself that question. Herm Edwards joining us here on The Fan. You mentioned Milner and the, the stuff about his injury his situation popping up. How much of that is put out there by the teams where they're playing poker? and they Sort of like what happened with Adrian Peterson years ago, where it goes out there, oh, I don't know if he's going to be healthy, and it's put out there by a team because they want to take him and they want to scare other guys away. Well, you, you, you're talking about the old smoke screen, and, and you realize this this week, and I used to always tell my coaches this. Let me tell you a little something. When all these you know, assistant coaches talk, they just can't help themselves. They're calling other guys. You know, all these boards sitting there, all, we're all having fun with it. I said, that's all good. You can talk to those other guys. Make sure you don't tell them anything. You just gather information, please. And you're right. There's a lot of smoke screens being sent out there. But when you talk about injuries, obviously, uh, your medical staff is involved in this, and, and, and you have to trust them. And so you don't really worry about what anybody else is saying. Now let me ask you, who do you think goes higher in this draft, Tyron Matthew or Manti Teo? Oh, Manti Teo. Manti Teo is going in the first round, guys. I mean, you're, you're talking uh, three teams are really looking at him, and uh, one of them happens to be the Vikings, uh, the Bears, uh, and then Baltimore. I think those are the three teams that um, he could fall to. So, I think uh, when you think about Tyron, uh, you know he's got a gift of, 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 you know, he steals downs. He steals possessions. You can't teach that. Now, you worry about when the guy leaves the building, obviously, and, and that's part of it. But he's going to be a good football player in this league. I don't know if he's a starter, but, but he's a specialist. In other words, um, he's going to play about 25 times, maybe 30 times in a football game, depending on how you use him. Um, he's a return guy. You're looking at this guy. You know, most people are saying, well, maybe the third round. Well, that gets you a little edgy because you don't know. Depending on where you're picking in the third round, he might be available. But I think if, if he's still sitting on the board in the third round, something's wrong. He'll be, he should be gone. Herm Edwards joining us here on The Fan. Let's say that Coach Herm is running the draft. Are you, are you drafting based on your need or the best player on the board? I've always been a big believer of the best player on the board because bet, you, you, this is why the scouts go out and, and, and evaluate players. You know, three years is a three year process in this. And I was a former scout, and there, there, there's a lot of information to gather on this guy. You know, good players are good players. 
you can't have enough good football players, and you realize that. Now, this is one of those drafts where you know uh, there's a, not a lot of uh, impact players. Because you talk about top ten players, you want the guy to make an impact. And, 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 and we say this right now, you know, and maybe the guy, impact guys are not the guys that play with the ball. That's why this draft all of a sudden becomes, oh, you know, everybody's you know, ooh and on. It's not that good. They're yeah, good football players. And you build your football team with offensive linemen and defensive linemen. That's how you build the core of your team. So there's a lot of guys that are going to get picked off this board. Ten years from now, we're going to say, well, that was maybe one of the best class of big men being drafted. Who's the best quarterback in this draft, Herm? Well, the best one, yeah, that's a great question. I think there's a lot of good ones. The guy I kind of like is E.J. Manuel. I think he has the best upside. I really do. I, I just I, I like him. I like his size. I like his athleticism. We see those type of quarterbacks having success in the league now because more coordinators are willing to really build a football team around the skill set. And you want a mobile guy anymore because when we play in a league, after first down it seems like everyone's spread all over the field. And you can't block them all. And you need a quarterback that can move around every once in a while. I still think they all have to play in the pocket because that's where you make your money in the pocket and that's where you can protect the guy. But I think when you look at some of these guys, he's the guy that's kind of, you know, I look at him very interesting and go, this guy's got a good upside. Well, now we know in this draft a lot of talk has been about these quarterbacks and probably one's going to go in the first round, if not more. But do you see a guy who you say is absolutely, is E.J. Manuel, for instance, like you said, does he deserve a first-round grade in a normal draft, if this is a normal draft? Uh, probably not. But here again, did, uh, did Ponder? This, this just happens, guys. It, 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 remember, we're, t- we're saying magical name in position, quarterback. <laughs> when, and when you don't have one, and you know what? You're always looking for one. And the great thing about it now for any, for any club is, it's not going to cost you an arm and leg. You're not going to hold your, your, your club in hostage because you drafted a quarterback and got to pay the guy $60 million anymore. That is not the case. And so the numbers are set. So you can take a flyer on a guy and say, you know what, we can't wait to the second round. We'll go ahead and get him in the first round, and we'll live with this guy. Maybe you don't play him right away. You know, I think what we run into is this. Because of the success of a lot of young quarterbacks, we saw it last year, three young quarterbacks take teams to the playoffs. That's a unique situation. And we feel like you draft one, now you've got to start right away. That's not always the case. I mean, remember, Aaron Rodgers didn't start. He did not start. And the Green Bay Packers still drafted him. And he was sitting there in the 20s, and everybody going, really? And remember this, too. We always look at quarterbacks, and if he's not a top-10 player, we probably, you know, I don't know about that. Think of all the quarterbacks that were not top-10 picks that went later in the first round, some in the second round. There's a couple guys, Joe Montana, that fellow's pretty good. He didn't go in the first to the second. How about that other guy, Brady? He wasn't real highly drafted. So when you need a quarterback, you think this guy fits your system. You think he has some, 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 some things that, that you know that during coaching and, and put him in the right offense, the guy can have some success. You better draft him. Coach, we always enjoy talking to you. Thank you for the time. Hopefully we can catch up again soon. Anytime, my friends. Thank you. Herm Edwards, ESPN NFL analyst, our guy joining us here on the Fan Draft. First round is tomorrow 